What? What? No way! Oh, you better stay tuned for this. Hey, what's going on, Todd Shaw, with another episode of The Sawdust Dude. Hmm. Oh, hey, uh, thanks for joining me again today. One of the things that I love to do on my downtime is more woodworking. Uh, you know, because really, I, during the week, I'm a carpenter. I get to work on log cabins. I'm a finished carpenter, so I, I do sub work with other uh, other contractors. But when I have a day off, guess what? I love to get in my little micro shop and make some stuff. And so it's all about whatever's laying around the shop. Well, I kind of had this thing uh, here a couple days ago. I had a snow day, and I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to go down to the shop and make something for me. Or make something to sell. And so I was looking around my stash, my stash of stuff, and I'm like, hey, what could I come up with? And, uh, you know, one of the things that I was kind of looking at... <laughs> one of the things that I was kind of... <laughs> one of the things I was kind of looking at, I was like, well, what do I have around the shop that I can make, you know, and sell? Or, you know what, I may keep it for a while, and uh, and then get tired of it and uh, turn around and sell it. I got two traffic lights. I need to do something with it. I want to keep one of them. And, and I paid like it was a customer, and he had them laying around, and I don't know, I bought them for like two for seventy five dollars. And normally you see them for around a hundred bucks, you know that that need work. So I said, yeah, I, I'll, I'll go for that. And so, uh, but they've been sitting around for a year, you know. And just waiting for the right time and the right thing to do with them. Or, you know, you get inspiration. I, what am I going to do with it? Well, I want to keep one and sell one. And that way, you know, if I sell it for 100 bucks, basically I got mine for free. And uh, that's kind of how I like to roll. Those things are like, let's do something different with the, uh, with the uh, traffic light. And let's shoot a video about it. Maybe you'll gain some inspiration from it. So... That's what we're really doing today. So, thanks for uh, for being um, for being here, and uh, let's check out our project. Yeah, so I got this cedar stump. Got all these little crooks and crevices in it. Isn't she a beauty, Crocky? Yeah. <laughs> so I knew I had the stump, and so I had the traffic light, and I was like, "Yeah, anybody can like hang it from the corner of their shop and stuff like that." Now let's do something different, you know. Let's make it more better. All right. So I got the stump. So kind of like here's the first step we did. We uh, took all the bark off of it, sanded it down. I'll throw those videos. We kind of did a little time lapse with that. So you'll get to check that out. It's <laughs>
uh, polycrylic, Minwax polycrylic. It's kind of what that looks like. A clear gl gloss. I use that because I'm in my micro shop and, you know, upstairs, you know, I don't want the fumes and the odors going up there. So that's a water-based product, low odor, you know, you can spray away, dries in a couple of hours, got a good hard finish to it. I'll apply a couple coats and do like an 800 sand on it, throw down a couple more coats, do like a thousand uh, sandpaper on it just to give it a nice smooth finish. So I've got the log all finished out what we want to do so it, that looks nice. So what we want to do now are put feet on it. It's, on this it's higher on one side, so one of the ways that you can do it is just put like a little bullet level or a little small level here. And I know that's probably about a half inch, a good half inch or so, or five eighths. Same way on this side, so it's higher over here and lower down here. Now, hey, let's talk a bit about this real quickly. You know, you, you may have a tool that'll take this high edge off this stump. Um, I've got something that works, and sometimes I just like using hand tools. Sometimes I just want to, you know, just try to keep it real simple. And so, uh, you know, one of the things that, that I like to use, but I didn't on this particular situation, is just because it, it wasn't bad enough. To me, these, these little uh, guides here, these little levelers for these feet, you know, I could, uh, I could make it work with this. And so it kind of saved me some time. And so uh, I just chose to do it that way. Here's the other thing. These things are like 12 bucks, 14, less than $15. You know, you got to be careful sometimes on your project. These things are like, oh, I need this, I need that. And you start running up the cost of the project and all of a sudden you're not going to make any money. Because what I'm talking to you about today is doing woodworking and carpentry. That's what the sawdust dude is all about, is helping you. Uh, so you can make money. Uh, it's about your passion. It's about whether it's a profession or whether it's a hobby. But, you know, even as a hobby, it's pretty cool to make money off of it so you can turn around and invest it more. Maybe take your family on vacation. Uh, but you can invest it in more tools. But on this particular thing, I didn't have a wheel handily available. And so I didn't go want to go buy one or order one on Amazon and wait two days. So I did this method here because it was the quickest and the cheapest and it still worked and I kept the quality where I wanted it to be. You get it? Now let's talk about tools. I need a new tool. You know, that's a, a big thing, especially in woodworking. You could sit there and just like, oh yeah, you need, okay. Uh-huh, yeah, right. Oh, I, I need, there's a tool for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. What you really need is this. Mm hmm Right. Mm hmm Okay, yeah. So you kind of get the picture of what I'm talking about? Yeah. Here's the deal with tools. This is kind of how I look at it. Uh, there are times where you need a tool for that particular job, and you need it, and you should go get it. But are you going to use it again? Ooh, that's a big question. So... Here's what I pose to you. Do I buy a real expensive, really, do I buy a real expensive, well-made tool, or do I go to Harbor Freight and pick it up? Here's my take on that, on the whole Harbor Freight tool issue. Yeah, a lot of woodworkers and carpenters are like, ah, oh, that's, that's cheap, it's cheap. Well, you're right. It's not as high quality as some of the other tools I own, but I have Harbor Freight tools in my shop and in my work van. And they are perfectly fine. Here's the deal. If I only use that tool once or twice, maybe three times a year, I'm going with a Harbor Freight tool. I'm not going to pay the big bucks for a, more, a higher quality tool that does the same thing. I'm going to go low budget because I only need it once or twice or maybe three times a year. I got tools around here that are from Harbor Freight. I may use them once every five years. But they're perfect for the job. So, for me, that's the big difference. How often are you going to use that tool? Because I look at my tools like my employees. If I got an employee that only works a couple times a year, and then I got those employees that make me money each and every day, that's the one that I pay attention to. So, I hope that helps. 
All right, here's the best thing about the, uh, the these little uh, these little guides and self lever levelers. What you want to do is um, find your drill bit that's just a touch smaller, and I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a test and make sure that it fits in there. And that's, that's kind of snug, and, and that's perfect. Because these things have little, little fins on them. And so, here's a hole that I drilled earlier. And so, I just take my rubber mallet, just kind of sit it in there, pop that in, and now it'll, uh, it'll accept that. And so you just, just kind of thread that back in. Now with that, you see how snug that is? That, that'll never come, come out, so uh, that's not a big deal there. Now here's a hole that I did earlier, and it's, it's too big. That little tip I showed you with this, I didn't do it, <laughs> okay? So being a good finished carpenter is all about hiding your mistakes. Let me say that again. Being a good finished carpenter, because we all make mistakes, a good finished carpenter can hide his mistakes. Well, I got to hide this mistake and that's going to fall out. I can do one or two things. Uh, I can take some, um, some epoxy and just put it around the edges here. Uh, I don't want to shoot it and fill up the hole because I don't want it to go down in these threads. But I can put just a little bit and even a little bit on that lip right there and pop that in. Let that epoxy dry and then that'll be nice and secure. But I just looked, I'm out of epoxy. So what I'm gonna do is take some silicone and do the same thing right there like that and pop that in and that'll be good to go. But let's go ahead and drill out our other holes here. things I'm doing here once again is just taking my bullet level and going from corner to corner and just making sure uh, that, that I get it fairly level. These on this high side, uh, these on the high side, I just ran these all the way down. But over here, you can see the difference there. But still, that's not bad, you know. And for what we're doing here, I mean, that works out good for me. So, you can kind of see that's pretty spot on. You know, I could just let them plug it in and plug it out, you know, and just that kind of thing, have a long cord on it. But, you know, I, I didn't want to do that. So what I did was uh, rig me up a little, uh, a little flange here. And so it's, bought, it's just stuff I bought at Lowe's, you know what I'm saying? And so it's an outdoor electrical box. So got the little quick connect thing there. And I also put a... A switch on it a switch on it here but it also comes with a dimmer Ooh, ah, uh, because one of the things that you can buy boards for these traffic lights so they'll do uh, uh, the lights will go on and off and be um, sequential wow that's all this dude he's been you know been reading books and stuff you saying them big words like sequential spill it now <laughs> but anyway, my vision for all this is really just to have like a uh, a corner lamp, you know, that they could use and uh, in a man cave kind of a situation. Not really a garage or a shop like this, but I, I want it to be so that it can put it in a man cave and something different. Because every time you see one of these things, it's hanging from the wall. But I, I just thinking outside the box a little bit, you know. 
So what I, what I did here that I'm going to have the wire that goes to the outlet. Uh, it's going to run up through here. And see, all I did here, I drilled a hole here, and I kind of angled it. Uh, but I first put my flange on here like this, and I made me four points. I made these four marks, took those off, kind of cross-referenced, and did an X in the middle so I knew where to drill. And this is, of course, big enough to cover that hole that I made right there. And so that hole goes down kind of at an angle, and you can see comes out right here. So I'm going to take my cord and fish it up through here and come up and so it's wired there so let's talk about like new stuff that i had to buy uh i had to buy this box um because i couldn't find one that i had laying around the little electrical clamp on the back that i had the flange in the pipe i bought that <clears throat> and of course i bought the traffic light that you'll see in a little bit so really i had to buy two cords like this and, and i went with a it's kind of like an old fashioned, it's a, almost like a cloth braided kind of, kind of, it's got a retro look. So anytime that I do like a upcycle project, I want everything to just kind of, it's just got a flow. It's that whole feng shui kind of thing. Well, there you go again, using them old big words. We can't, I ain't gonna follow the sawdust dude if he's talking about feng shui and sequential and all that other crazy stuff. Boy, you gotta keep it simple for this. <laughs> so, let's uh, let's get busy with this. What's amazing about these uh, traffic lights they're really they're really pretty light i mean you know it, it's all real uh, it's, it's aluminum um it's like cast aluminum so what i want to do uh on this particular situation I, i've opened up the green side over here and there's where like wires and things would have gone through there i'm just going to drill three holes and so i can secure this down to the stump and i'm probably going to use those same um um Craig uh, pocket screws uh, those those screws will go down deep enough and I'm just going to take the drill and drill a little small hole little small holes through here you know on the bottom and I got to make sure I do it in such a way where I can you know get my drill in there and get my screws in there so we'll pop a couple screws in there and even if I drill too many or if it, I have to re-drill it uh, you won't see all this anyway so well, let's give that a shot. Hey, one of the things that I need to check out too, like I said, because I've, if you've never done something before, think about all the potential problems. These particular lights here get rather warm. And, uh, but you can see where it was hooked up and I've got a hole right here. Um, and what I need to make sure is, I, I kind of wanted to plug that hole because I, I didn't want kids dropping stuff in there or somebody has a one too many beers and they start doing stuff like that. But big thing, I didn't want like kids dropping pencils and pennies and things like that. So I bought this little deal here. And uh, of course this goes like in a desktop and I've got to do some, some working on it here to make sure I got to kind of sand the edges a little bit, even though it's plastic, I, you know, I can sand it down. I didn't want something too loose, but I want it to be snug in there. Um, but the other thing that I need to figure out too is a lot of the heat's coming off the front side, but not much on the back side because it's got that reflective shield on there. So you got to look out for stuff like that. You know, the last thing I want to do is like a plastic part start dripping hot plastic down in there and just, you know, burn somebody's house down or burn my house down. That wouldn't be a good thing for the sawdust dude. Hey. Your light, it burnt down our double wide. Hey, <laughs> here, here's one for you. What does a uh, what does a redneck divorce 
and a tornado have in common. Either way, somebody's losing a mobile home. <laughs> anyway, all right. So this has been running for about 30 minutes now, and it's not too terribly hot. I'm okay, and I can, I can touch the back side of that little uh, reflective piece here on, on the red light. So I'm okay with putting a plastic top on there. So kind of think things through, test drive them, if you will, and uh, make sure it's going to work out. So let's get this mounted to the stump. All right, so I figured out one thing. I uh, This is actually the sawdust dude from the future. <laughs> I figured out a couple things. One, I told you I was going to test drive this thing and make sure it didn't overheat or anything like that and really test out the electronics of it or the electro electrical. <laughs> test out the electrical part of it and and so i did and i kept putting my hand up here on the red light and it was fine and uh then i was like i, I gotta think like a kid i gotta think down low what if you know some dude's got this and his grandkids come over and yeah i grabbed that that green one and it i mean lit my hand on fire that thing was so hot and so i was like i gotta redo this well I looked around my shop and I had some leftover like can lights and these are the retro kind so they just really screw in to the existing light socket and this particular brand you can adjust uh, the brightness of it so <laughs> it's worked out great so we're just going to uh, retrofit the old lighting to a new LED style lighting and I did, on the switch in the back, I did go ahead and get uh, an LED acceptable uh, switch and a dimmer. And these lights do dim as well. So I will still have that feature. So this is the plan I've come up with now. This is uh, the insert, and, and this is glass. Otherwise, I would, I would cut this out. And since it's glass, I'm just not going to mess with it. Uh, and so I've got some old uh, Luon, pieces of Luon laying around here and these are just two these aren't boobs these are just two of them <laughs> laying laying here and so uh, i'm just going to cut them out on the bandsaw and then we'll uh, make it so uh this will fit in there so um you know make me a, a circle about like that so anyway let's, let's give that a shot
and boom, like that. Hey, so here we go. So I, I uh, wasn't, like I said, I wasn't real happy with the lights and how they were heating up. So um, I just got these, um, th these, these lights here from, uh, from Lowe's and they're LED lights. Uh, so really it's gonna pull less amps. Uh, they're gonna last longer. It still gives off uh, a lot of lumens. So, and even on the back of these, get this little shot here, you know, it's got a switch so you can adjust um, the, the brightness of the light, you know. So, uh, I'm just totally happy with these. Once again, these are stuff that I had laying around the shop, and I just wound up just siliconing all this in. You know, some of this stuff Tom, sometimes is just trial and error, and it may not work out right the first time, but... Over the years, I've done enough stuff like this. You kind of get a an idea, a flair for it. So you know what it works out. You see, all I need to do now is to just add a cover plate to this, and I'll get like a, an old rub bronze or cover plate, and then uh, get me a couple fasteners right here to secure this to the back. See how the plug comes out at the back real nice? It's all finished out. Get a shot from over here. Got a nice long extension cord to it. So here it is, a completed project. Just another snow day in the micro shop. So a great, uh, great project, something that, that was just cool and different. Uh, just to throw this out there, those, uh, those little um, glider pads that I use, the little plastic insert, I, I don't know if I'm totally happy with that. I may do something a little upscale and I know Lowe's does sell these little deals and you can kind of screw, uh, screw in, uh, hopefully those will fit, but uh, you know, on any kind of project like this where there's not a set of plans that you follow, it's just all in that pretty little head of yours. So uh, you're gonna make mistakes, but you know, just figure it out. Just keep rolling and going with it. And hey, thanks again for watching the Sawdust Dude. Subscribe, like, let me hear from you. See what, hey, tell me what you think about this. 300 bucks and it could be yours. Hey, thanks again for watching the Sawdust Dude. I'll see you real soon, okay. <laughs>